the lesson we learn that in the storm we don't fear because when Jesus had still the storm then he addressed their problem and I like it about Jesus he didn't start rebuking them to say oh you people and there's so and so and so and so forth and then solve the problem he solved the problem and then corrected their attitude and this is the question Jesus asked them why were you so fearful how is it that you have no faith so what Jesus is saying is well just by me being present with you you shouldn't have been afraid yes it's a storm it will play tricks on your mind it will make your mind go in circles. But he says, because I'm with you, you shouldn't have been afraid. We don't have to let this storm be over before we learn that lesson. We can learn that lesson now. That because he's with us, we fear not. We refuse to be afraid. There is a fear that is sometimes healthy. Fear that helps you to comport yourself and do the right thing. And then there is another fear that torments you and harasses you and make you kill yourself before your time. And most of you are facing that fear. Anytime you, you feel a cough in your throat, you are wondering, have I gotten it? You sneeze, is it here? The little inconvenience in your body throws your mind into a spin circle. If you believe he is with you in the storm, then why do you behave as if you are in the storm all alone? He is the one who told us from the beginning of the journey, let us go over to the other side. He was with us in January. He was with us in February. He was with us in March. He's been with us in April. He's going to be with us in May. He'll be with us in June. He'll be with us in July. He'll be with us in August and September and October and November and December and next January. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's always there. He says, why did you fear? And then the second question he asked them, how is it that you have no faith? Interesting question. So Jesus is saying, the reason you were afraid was because you had no faith. No faith produces fear. What should they have had faith for or faith in? They should have had faith that when he said to them from the beginning, let us go over to the other side, he had already determined the end of the journey that they would be on the other side. They should have believed right from the beginning they started with him and he had already determined the end. Let us go over to the other side. And each one in that boat was going to get over to the other side. They should have believed that in the storm. So I'm here to remind you. If you trusted God in January. And you believed him in January. And you are in this storm. Go back to the God you believed in January. Go back to the God you trusted in January. Go back to the God you trusted in February. Go back to the God you trusted in December. When you said 2020 will be the greatest year of your life. When you felt God was speaking to you, let us go over to the other side. Now in the storm, you still have to believe what God spoke to you. A precious woman of God called Corrie ten Boom. Corrie ten Boom was a uh, caught was a Jew and during the second world war she was caught in the Nazi camp as a prisoner with her sister and they went through a lot of pain but after the second world war Corrie ten Boom came out of uh, the Nazi prison and became a great preacher a woman preacher 
And she said something very, very precious that helped her when she was in prison. And, and she spoke it after she came out to help Christians. And she says, when you are in the darkness, believe what God said to you in the light. When you are in the darkness, believe what God said to you in the light. What does that mean? When there is no problem and God says, let's go over to the other side. When storm comes, you have to go back to what he said to you right from the beginning. So go back to what God inspired in your heart in January, in last year, when you had hope, when you had expectation. Don't say, oh, this is the end of my dream. That's not the end of your dream. Your dream cannot be destroyed. Yes, your business is going through turbulence. We are all experiences. Churches are going through turbulence. But I still believe that God who spoke to me from January. I want you to believe the God who spoke to you in January, who assured you in your heart. Some of you had great plans. You're going to get married this year. You still have to believe you will marry this year. Some of you believe that this year was going to be the greatest year. You still have to believe this is going to be the greatest year of your life. Jesus says, why were you afraid? And why did you have no faith? Faith is trusting that the God who spoke to you from the beginning will go through the journey with you. So there is a call. We start with a call. Let's go over to the other side. And he is with us when he calls us. Then after the call, there is the storm. Then after the storm, there is the silence. Then after the silence, there is the panic. Then after the panic, there is the word of God that comes to speak to the storm. And the lesson we learn from that is we don't have to be afraid when we are in the storm. Don't only believe God and trust him when things are cool. It doesn't take faith to believe God when things are cool. Faith is required when things are not cool. And I came to announce to you, the same God who was with you at the beginning of this year will be with you at the end of this year. He's not abandoned you. He is with us. He is with Ghana. He is with Africa. He is with the rest of the world. And after all of that had happened, the disciples who had known Jesus all along at this time, they walk with him for quite a bit. Ask a very interesting question. Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Isn't it amazing the kinds of things people discover about God? Now, remember that Jesus had been with these disciples on the Sea of Galilee, actually the same sea. When Peter had no fish, and Jesus says to him, launch out into the deep for a catch. He says, Lord, we've toiled all night long with no results, but at your word. And Peter launches and catches fish. Now, it never crossed his mind that the same Lord who can bring fish out of nowhere into the sea can also command the sea to be still. Many of us experience God one way, but don't extend his power to other areas of our lives. What kind of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? He is the king of creation. He created the wind and the sea. This virus, virus is a creation of God. He is the master of life. He rules over every situation in life. He is the word that abides forever. What he said to us in the beginning will abide in the storm. He is the beginning and the end. He doesn't start with you and drop you in the middle of the 
ocean. If he says, let's go over to the other side, he's going to go over to the other side with us. In a moment, there is a storm. In a moment, we are in the middle of the sea. In the middle of nowhere, we can't see our way clear. In a moment, but in another moment, the Lord arises and speaks to our situation. Let God arise and all his enemies be scattered. May God arise over Ghana and speak peace be still to the storms of this nation. May God arise in your life, in your family, and command peace be still. I don't know what storm you are going through by this fifth month of the year. But I pray God will arise into your circumstance. Whatever. It could be a sickness. It could be a financial disaster that is really scaring you. And you're looking at it and you say, how am I going to survive this? God will arise on your behalf. He will arise on your behalf. And he's going to say, peace, be still. And everything will be all right. 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 And if you really trust him, that he's with you in the storm this morning, wherever you are, listening to me, not when you're driving. If you're driving, don't obey this instruction. But wherever you are listening to me, just lift up either your two hands or one hand to God. And begin to thank him that he is with you in the storm. That he's not abandoned you. Just thank him. Say, Lord, I recognize your presence. I know you are with me in the storm. Thank you that you've never abandoned me. I feel the shaking of my boat. I feel the shaking of my system. My, the ground is shaking. But Lord, I trust you and I thank you that you are with me in the situation. You've never abandoned me. And I refuse to question you and to doubt you. I refuse to question you and to doubt you. I refuse to be afraid. But I allow my confidence in you to grow stronger and stronger. Just talk to the Lord. Just talk to him. Talk to him. He's coming into your situation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the move of your spirit. Thank you for changing atmospheres. Atmospheres are shifting. Situations are changing. All over this land. In Jesus name. The enemy has come against us like a flood. But today the spirit of God lifts up a standard against that flood. Thus far and no further. Thus far and no more. We speak the power of God into their situation. We command the situation to yield to the voice of Jesus. We command your situation to yield to the voice of Jesus. No matter what storm you're going through, in the name of Jesus, we command peace be still. 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 And we thank you, Father, that we are coming through this on the other side. We are coming with a song. We are coming with a testimony. We are coming rejoicing. We are coming with victory. We are coming with strength. We are coming with power. We are coming as overcomers. We will not go down. But we will rise. And we will declare your praise. And we will declare your honor. We will declare your majesty. You are the redeemer. You are the great deliverer. 
You didn't bring us to the storm to kill us. You didn't bring us to the middle of the sea to leave us. You didn't bring us this far to make us a mockery and a shame and a byword. We haven't come this far to be disgraced. We haven't come this far to be disappointed. We haven't come this far to die and to be destroyed. We have come this far to see the glory of the Lord. And we thank you that you who started with us, you will finish with us. And before I close my message today, if you are here and you don't have Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior, allow him to come into your heart. Allow him to come into your boat, the boat of your life. And bring calm and peace to your life. If you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, just lift up your right hand wherever you are and say this short prayer with me. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I come to you today just as I am. I am a sinner. Save me. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Change my life. Make me a brand new person. I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord and I declare it with my mouth and I thank you Father for my salvation and my new life in Jesus name. Amen and amen. I trust God that his presence is with you wherever you are at home on your sick bed that he's raising you up Wherever you're listening to me in the hotel room or wherever you are, may God ride the storm with you and give you victory. You are going over to the other side. You will arrive at the other side. Your dream will speak. Your vision will speak. There's been a storm, but you have not been diverted. You are still on the same journey. And you will arrive safely in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout a big amen with me. Amen. amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, storms will come in life, but we are not alone. Jesus is our anchor in the storm, our calm in the chaos, and our hope in the darkness. In Matthew 14, 20-33, we read the story of Jesus walking on the water, meeting Peter in his moment of crisis. Peter's eyes were fixed on Jesus, but when he looked at the waves, he began to sink. As we go through the storm with Jesus, let us remember, keep our eyes fixed on him, not on the waves Hebrews 12-2. Trust in his power and love, not our own strength to Corinthians 12, 9-10. Hold on to his promises, they are our lifeline Hebrews 6, 18-19. Don't be afraid to cry out to him, he is always near Psalm 34, 17-18. Take his hand. He will guide us through the storm Isaiah 41 to 13. As we face the storms of life, let us stand firm on the rock of ages, Jesus Christ. Ride out the storm with him, knowing he will bring us to calmer waters. Experience his peace, which surpasses all understanding. Know that he is working everything out for our good. Come out stronger, wiser, and more in love with him. May Jesus be our refuge, our strength, and our guide in the storm. May we emerge from the storm with a deeper faith, a stronger trust, and a heart full of praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope this message brings encouragement and hope as you navigate life's storms with Jesus. God bless you.